got it tacked up. And if you get too close, you're getting cracked up. Stone cold when I roll, coming out of the hole. Get back, cause I'm out of control. I'm on the edge. Welcome to Lucas Oil on the Edge. The Sunshine State is the home to some outstanding swamp buggy racing with this week's episode. We have the amazing V8 class set to take off today. The sippy holes aren't going to be a problem for these competitors. Let's go right to the action at the Mile of Mud. Welcome to Florida Sports Park. This is Swamp Buggy Country. Ken Stout and Brian Olson here with you. Plenty of good eats for all the fans. Plenty of excitement from the Swamp Buggy Racing presented by General Tire here in Naples, Florida. Good stuff, Brian. Yeah, it really is, and man, I'll tell you what. The food, I don't know whether it's chicken or alligator. They're dancing. Here comes the sweethearts, and I'll tell you what, another sweetheart, Rob Klepper. Well, if you want the big horsepower in Swamp Buggy Racing, my suggestion is the V8 class. Why? Right there, 485 cubic inch maximum. Huge horsepower, huge speeds here at the Mile of Mud. Now, pump gasoline, racing gasoline, that's what you can run. No NOS, no turbochargers, no superchargers, no blowers. Adjustable shocks you can see on all four corners of the V8 class, but what's really important are the skis. And all of Swamp Buggy Racing, you have to have the skis. Depending on the height, you can actually adjust these skis to make your buggy gleam across the water. There's a lot of technology inside of these things, and as Rob just mentioned, no shortage of horsepower as we watch some of the big boys come out here to play. There's a lot of different classes out here. If you don't have the, the budget, the wherewithal, the time to build something that runs up here in this category, they have a stock Jeep category as well. So you can have fun if you want to do it, but if you're going to play with these boys and girls, I might add, you better be ready. Yeah, you better have some steam right there. As he mentioned, 570 inches. And of course, 570 inches, probably some of the 850, 900 horsepower range there. You need to have it. Here's Jerry Cowdell, Charity Palmer now making a move on the outside. And you can see the sippy hole affecting these, but once they get up to speed and they can take advantage of those skis, as Rob was talking about, they'll clear that sippy hole much quicker. There's one right there. They're going through it now. And there'll be one right about there as well. They're pretty well going right over the top of it. Now, the faster machines, as we all know, will do that. The slower machines that are powered down a bit, not so much. And you can see right there, they try to hug that inside shoreline. Jerry doing a good job of it. And uh, of course, your, your competitor wants to stay outside of that wake. So to stay outside of that wake, you have to run a much wider line to make a pass. Not only does that wake hit your machine, but it also will hit you in the mug, and that hurts a little bit. Not to mention, you can't see a thing. <laughs> it don't got me some, doesn't got him some. Absolutely. Jerry doing a great job here as he picks up the win. So much fun to watch these guys go at it. I tell you what, it is amazing. These things are the way they're built. All right, here we go. Challenger, bar money, and Terminator. And look at that flame job on that thing. It's not what they call flames, they call it true fire. That's really cool. And we talked about technology before. You can see they get very creative here. Yeah, look at that machine. There's the Challenger, number 26, bar money, and Terminator. But look in the middle. If you look at that thing in the middle, the red one, and you saw that shot from down low at the front. He's got, oh, oh baby. Yeah, and he stumbles right. Yeah, he stumbled right off the bat. Unfortunately for him, and the Terminator gets off to a great start. And you saw the nose oh! of that. And that'll do it right there. That'll slow your day down. A broken axle will do it every time. And it is our man Roy Ortega who comes out with some brand new paint. Yeah, here Ortega. This week. And he launched that thing when he launched it. When it was sitting there, the nose was in the water. As you can see, once it gets its proper attitude and race form, it is well clear of the water. And Ortega has really done some work on this machine. Now, I don't know what he's done mechanically. It's always fast. Skip Ken has given it a valiant effort. However, the other machine is not. It is dead in the water, literally. But man, they've really worked this thing over and it's really, really pretty. Gold leaf lettering, true fire, new lettering on the, uh, on the car itself, as I mentioned. And they've even painted those wheels to look like a mag wheel. But well, it cool. almost looked like the Terminator was slowing down there a little bit. Ooh, as it is. As the Challenger is coming on strong and might steal one here. Oh. 
and absolutely is going to get it done. You never give up, right? Because you never know what's going to happen. And Skip Kent finished the course and picks up the win. Unbelievable. And I hate using that word, but there's not much more you can say about it. Coming up, we'll continue on here at the Mile of Mud. This Lucas Oil on the Edge telecast is being brought to you by Lucas Oil. Made in America, sold to the world. General Tire, anywhere is possible. Ready Lift Off Road Suspension, a new revolution in off-road suspension design and development. We're having some fun down here in Naples, Florida, covering the V8 Sportsman category of the Swamp Buggies, nine competitors strong. We've been through the first two heat races, if you will, as we develop our class winners. We have three more here, and then, of course, we'll take those three winners, pair them all up, and find out who's going to win the class. Lady Liberty, foreplay, Southern Thunder match up here. Only one goes to the final round. Rolling up here, making final adjustments, if you will, and it is game time. Well, they put those babies right up on that tranny break, and those motors are singing. And a good start here for Lori Johns. She's been doing this for so long. She is extremely talented, needless to say, Lady Liberty here. And she will put it on the boys. And Lori Johns, during a last couple of events that we've covered here, has been really, really on fire. Wow, and look at that. I've never seen one carry the front end like that. She finally had to check up to keep from flipping it. If you take a good close look at that final turn coming out of there, it almost looks like the water's down a touch. Something's different. I don't know really what it is. Well, there's a big upset there. Mr. Greenling is out of here. Southern Thunder will not finish the event. Well, Lori hanging in there, has that thing settled back down now and doing a great job. See what she does this time by. That's a lot smoother there. Right there is where she picks up that hop, oh, though, and yeah. she's hit that a couple times, but wow. she manages to hang on to it. A seasoned veteran right there, and she picks up the win. That'll take her to the final. She will pair up alongside the challenger and got me some. Got me some. So all three competitors here will line up for this class championship. Fans love this stuff. Strapped in, looking over as they get ready to go. Caught ill. Johns, and then that 26 machine of Skip Kent in the Challenger. Kent off to a good start, as is Lori Johns. Lori first to the turn. Boy, this is a close one at the crossover. If, if Kent can keep that thing close to the inside wall, She's and trying to close the door on him right there. She did what she needed to do, and that was put him in the wash. That's exactly what she meant to do. And she is good at it, too, man. Wow, that water is rough right there. And again, take a look at her machine bouncing. I mean, it did a pretty nice job through there that time, but just one round to go. I mean, the whole front end was up in the air. Well, it's been kind of windy down here, you know, and I mean, that could be enough to take that water and roughen it up a good bit. Now look at those front wheels and tires. I mean, just like knives as they slice through that water. And she is using those skis quite a good bit as well. I mean, that is max right there. I mean, they're lifting the inside tires. There is not much left before that thing goes over. <laughs> Hands up in the air, and Lori Johns does it again. Congratulations to Lady Liberty. Listen up, Lucas Oil on the Edge fans. It's time to prove how much you love OTE by downloading the free Lucas Oil on the Edge app for your iPhone and iPad. You can check out the OTE schedule, see past shows, and meet the cast. In addition, you can browse the OTE apparel. This is an app that has it all and is a must for every Lucas Oil on the Edge fan. We're leaving the sippy holes now and getting ready to take on the hills at the Shush Mountain Snow Challenge. It's head-to-head -head competition with the super modified class and it's a whole lot of fun to watch. Let's send it down to the hill. No shortage of horsepower here at Shush Mountain. 
It's the Mountain Snow Challenge. Ken Stout, Brian Olson here to call the action for you. There's only one thing missing. It's snow. We need some. The Mountain Snow Challenge presented by Lucas Oil is always a great event to watch. And even though there's no snow or ice, we will still have the competition. They will just dig up the dirt. That's exactly what they'll do. And it's pretty bad when you look around and you actually see guys and gals wearing T-shirts. Early on, it's double elimination. The top eight from the double elimination will move into the eight machine championship final round. That's how it works here, baby. We're on the good night part of Shush Mountain. It's a 300 foot run, 45 degree bank, side by side uphill. You don't go over it, you just go to a finish line mark at 300 feet. Cindy, you're the driver of the lunatic machine behind me. Talk to me a little bit about your experience in racing. Um, I've been racing for 10 plus years. Um, been doing it all my life. Um, went, started out with, you know, little Jeep Cherokees, you know, secret weapons to now I'm racing mini buggies and dragsters. Now you come from the sand. Talk to me about this, because this is snow. Um, it's no, no different. Um, sand, yes. Um, but as far as the snow and the sand, it's nothing different. I mean, you're talking granules of sand versus ice balls. Yeah, winter hasn't been very fair to us, so it's really not that different <laughs> this year than previous years. No, it's, it's pretty much dirt up there. All right, Tom, this machine is set up a little different compared to the other ones out here. Talk to me about that. Yeah, we're running a uh, snowmobile motor. It's a 670 Skidoo, and uh, you can go, this is only 40 cc's compared to a lot of these trucks are 10 times that 400, 500 cubic inch motor. So you're going to see this little buggy uh, go against those, those big machines and uh, it's going to do a heck of a job. Now Lunatic normally is in the sand. What other changes did you have to make to get it out here? Oh, the only thing we really did, we, we normally run a smaller tire, like a quad tire, and we went to the bigger tires to get more traction in the, in the snow as, com as compared to the sand. So let's see if Lunatic can tackle the hill and make it to the top. Okay, let's take you back and show you some highlights from our double eliminations. And right off the bat, there is Cindy with a buggy. And of course, the ground clearance is what has my attention. I wonder if she could get up through it, but she did a great job. Man, that thing bounced all over for just a little bit. And their husband or his crew chief was talking about, you know, how much power they got and its power to weight ratio. Killed that Chevy truck. Helen Thaw and Bilsma going at it here. You can see the all-wheel drive, the four-wheel drive. Bronco. Woo! And Woo! yeah, it got a little interesting about midway <laughs> through the course. They're not supposed to do this in this style of racing. <laughs> man, oh man, oh man. And a little bit out of the dirt there and into the ice. It got even slicker yet. Shredding some tires out here. Charlie Willis coming out here with a buggy as well. Kelly Bales alongside. This is buggy all the way, baby. Yeah, Bales, uh, you saw a launch, a hard launch, but the front end came up in the air and immediately off the course, and that ended their chance. Kip Martin did bend. Oh, man! Whoa! <laughs> yes, the wheelie bar is on Ooh. there for a reason. I that, mean, has some, that thing has some power. Talk about horsepower. That thing dug in, and it literally just rotated on the back wheel. Holy to go to our wheel stand competition. Yeah, he does, man. <laughs> that was bizarre. Next up, Joe Burke and Robert Crandall in the far lane. Well, out of the groove a little bit is the home-built machine and pickup truck will be the first one to finish here. Hand in the air, ready to rock. Yeah, watch Crandall on the far side there. I mean, just immediately it dug in and sent it off to the right. He countersteered, just couldn't keep it on the course. So he struggled here in the double elimination round. All right, guys, the sun has come out and heated up the course, melting the little bit of snow that they did have. Even with the amount of horsepower, it's still a struggle for these guys to get up this hill. And here's a look at the ladder, in the super modified category. Much like a drag race, and it's first one of the stripe wins. Rob Mubelow right there, just act like he came out of the burnout box. Now, I don't know that you need to get heat in these paddle tires, but it looked like he did, so he knows more about it than I. Well, and then, of course, you also need to clean those things out, as you well know, make sure the motor has a little bit of heat in it. Right. 
Keep from being loaded up or too much fuel in there. Get set, here we go. First pair of eliminations. Trying to keep it under control, that short wheelbase, and it is a handful. Good side-by-side -side battle here. Todd Bilsman takes the win. Yeah, and Todd he was behind there for a bit. And he was one of them that had problems earlier. Absolutely, and you can see, I mean, he was behind till just about there, about mid-course. As we take a look at our general tire instant replay, but Bills by keeps it straight and true and picks up the win. Just made a straighter run. We'll watch it one more time. On the far side, nearest the camera now, all over the racetrack, on and off the throttle, and that gives the green machine an opportunity to pick up the win. Washburn and the purpose-built machine alongside Mike Page. Page has his work cut out for him here. He's ready to go, though. Washburn <laughs> never even leaves the line. But don't think for a second that one didn't have it in it to beat him. Page's machine was quick, boy. Look at that thing. Man, I he, the ready lift off-road instant replay shows a beautiful shot here. Washburn never leaves the line. Page stands on the throttle, carries Wheel. the front end. Woo. Wheels in the air at 300 feet. Oh, and he held his hands up saying, give me a moment. I wasn't quite ready yet. When you pull up to the stripe, man, you better be ready to go. Former drag racer Kim Martin comes to the line. And Kip will take on Charlie Willis here. Kip in the far lane, Charlie in the near lane with the buggy and Charlie making it work. Here comes Kip on the far side, but can't get it done. That was a great matchup there. Look Kip on the throttle, but had to check up there just for a moment, and that cost him. Charlie got out of the gate first. He sure did. And I got to tell you, looking at the lanes, I think the right lane is the better of the two. And obviously, you get the lane choice based on how you did during your uh, your qualifying rounds. Anthony and Burke, Ford versus Chevy. You don't need the entire truck to do this. Nope, you just need part of it. <laughs> and that's man. the important part, man, because he gets it done. Wow. I said the left lane was the rough for the two. Now, in this case, it looks the opposite. However, Anthony's machine, look at that thing. Picture perfect up the center of the groove, which is really, really rough. Anthony to round two. We love to hear from our fans. Go to www.facebook.com and become a fan of Lucas Oil on the Edge. Join our OTE private group or like our page. Then post your comments about this Lucas Oil on the Edge episode. We are slinging some dirt out here with the Super Mods. We are in the semifinals. We've had a lot of fun. We've worked our way through the double elimination round. Now we're working our way to the final two. Todd Bilsma, Mike Page, Charlie Willis, Tom Anthony. Now, you saw earlier, Bilsma got dinged. He got a little accident, but in double elimination, he had a perfect run the second time, and that's why he's still here, but he won't be here for the final. The other machine, however, will. That is Mike Page, another perfect run. Yeah, Page was in the right lane there the last two rounds. Had to check up again right there because the beginning of that lane is tricky, but Page has so much power. Yeah, the power brings that front end and lights it up, and when he gets to that point, he's just sitting there riding on the back wheels. And, man, that is one bad machine. Well, who will Paige take on? I think it's going to be Charlie Willis because I'm going to give you Tom Anthony because you've been beating me up so bad. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, Tom Anthony's got a good truck here, but he that does. buggy has been solid to say the least. And it looks like he's getting a little head start. Now I guess they're even there. <laughs> that camera angle looked like he had a little, little jump on him, but not going to happen here. Man, that buggy of Charlie Willis is bad. And the truck, though, just didn't look like he ever got things going like he did earlier in that left lane. I'll tell you, Charlie nearly clipped the cone there on the center line, so he just barely dodged that thing. It could have been DQ'd right off the bat. i tell you something. I would love to do that right there. 300-foot race, and that's great. So Paige and Charlie Willis to the final round as predicted by the one and only and that final round is coming up here in just a moment. Stay with us. 
You're watching Lucas Oil on the Edge. We always say that you're not living unless you're on the edge, and we mean it. Let's get right back to the best grassroots motorsports racing. It's only on OTE. Time now for the final of the Super Mod category. And we're going to make a pick here since you started that battle. <laughs> and since I get to go first, to me, it's a no-brainer. Paige has definitely got some horsepower here. Yeah, he's got some steam, but Charlie Willis has the same last name as my wife's family, so I'm going to go with Charlie. I tell you what, based on the previous round, they're separated by a hundredth of a second. It'd be a good one. Definitely. So they'll pull up here, hard to believe too, but we talked about it before, horsepower versus weight. That lighter buggy gets up and going very, very quickly. Paige really sinks the tires in because he's got so much horsepower. Oh, and he was late right there. Paige is in trouble. Oh, something happens to the machine of doggone Charlie Willis. Oh, he broke her. <laughs> he's gonna back her down. What a shame too, because he had a great start there. Well, I gotta tell you, as he walks it over again here, it happened for Paige in round one. And he stayed in that right lane the entire time. A quick breathe of the throttle there in round two and then starts carrying the front end. And that got him to the final. Let's see, what, let's see what broke on that thing. Obviously it was a driveline issue somehow. But anyway, Mike Page your champ. Mike, congratulations on the win. Take me through that last race. Well, I knew Trelly had been fast all day, so uh, just I just went. It went straight. I just went and kept going. Got to the top of the hill, and well, he's not there. I, just, I didn't know he broke. Did you make any changes in any of the rounds until the final? No. You just pointed it up? I kept going in this lane, didn't you? Right here. <laughs> so right that lane, lane was right the lane, lane, right lane. lane. You picked the right even lane joint. She, even though she did a wheel, I still got the right lane. It was awesome. Any other thoughts? <laughs> no. Congratulations. It doesn't matter if it's mud, snow, or dirt. If you can race on it or in it, we'll bring it to you here at Lucas Oil on the Edge. We hope you enjoyed all the great racing action. Thanks for watching. Remember, you're not living unless you're on the edge.